gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today on a request especial from the man, the legend, Adam Booth, a machinist extraordinaire, a fellow what makes a living taking big chunks of metal and turning them into little wee chunks of metal. Mr. Booth and I set to talking a couple, three, four dozen months ago about testing the efficacy of electronical welding helmets versus manual pipeliners. So we're, I'm, I'm just knocking them out like a monkey at the zoo here today. It'll come as no surprise to you, incorrigible social climber that I is. I occasionally like to sit at the machinist cool kids table for picking up a scrap here and there. And also the mothball-y Velcro sneaker smell kind of rubs off when I'm, when I'm with the cool kids a little bit. And this is the pipeliner style here, manual. It's not a proper pipeliner on account of the bank will only give me so many third mortgages. Now a pipeliner is great for starting out. It's super tough. You won't see fuck all anyway. Now, this feels, it's so easy, it feels too much like cheating. And the thing is with the electronicals, if something goes wrong, you're friggin' farting and fucking around. When I learned to TIG weld, I hired a welder to teach me how to TIG weld and you know, held me by the hand and uh, whispered sweet nothings in my ear. But uh, I picked it up pretty quick and well, first thing he told me, I was using his helmet for a little bit, but that's kind of, that's kind of, um, how would you call that? That's a little bit taboo. It's kind of like wearing somebody else's rubber boots for your dick. It's gross. So, so I went out and got my, and his advice was buy once, cry once. You're gonna want to go and buy the cheapest piece of shit you can get your dirty dick beaters around. Buy something good because you'll end up buying the good thing anyway. So you end up paying twice as much and twice as much hassle rather than just buying the good one right off the bat. So I chose a wisely and I bought the Lincoln Electric and Miller for drinking and Lincoln for something else. And it's been a good helmet, but I'm gonna uh, explain how it works. Yes, JFM. But for the rest of us who actually want to know how it works. Oh my god, like a monkey humping a cactus over here. Fuck! Ah! She's out! Freedom horrible. Oh, there you are. Through the gore tube. Look at that. Focus goes in, focus goes Okay, this module, what for is to protect you from ultraviolet. So, you know. Some guys like to tan their pasty white eyeballs. I myself don't care for the after effects of two days of blinking sand out that never goes away, but each to his own. The, the only thing is there's three types of radiation. Well, when you strike the arc, those angry pixies, they, they, they angry up those air molecules and whatever shielding gas molecules and cause it to turn into plasma. That plasma off puts a shit ton of radiation, electromagnetic radiation. You don't believe me? Turn on a radio next to a welder. So we got UV, ultraviolet, which is what you think you're getting protection from. We also have IR, which is heat. Now, heat is very important to shield your eyes from as any uh, torch, you know, a welder who's been in the trade for a long time working at that same focal distance and also running torches, infrared uh, kills eyes. It cooks your eyes over time. So you need to wear safety maglarses when you're running uh, an oxyacetylene torch. It's not the UV that gets you, it's the heat. It's the heat coming off it, the heat rays coming off it. And also, in this case, we also need to mitigate, we need to tone down the visible spectrum because it's just too friggin' bright, you can't see nothing. Now, interestingly, despite this mainly being thought of as a UV shield, it's essentially an electromagnetic uh, radiation shield. And because of that, when you strike an arc, you get lots of heat. Because of that, we can use a heat sensor in here to trigger. And that heat sensor, oh, very interesting here. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. I gotta turn this around like so. So this is a remote control and this works 
on infrared and you can see that you can't see that with the naked eye but the camera picks it up it's sending infrared signals that is what is triggering we got two instruments and a clipboard what's been baking in the sun this is uh what is this ling shang and this is a hold well <laughs> they know me so well oh we'll get into here shrimp ramen flavor packet my favorite now we're going to use, well, 9 out of 10 TV doctors agree. The more scientitious you look, the better the results. Not triggered. We can see through it. And same, same. 100% UV re uh, rejection and 100% IR rejection. That's the problem with these is because they are triggered on IR, if you're grinding real hard and you create a lot of heat and sparks, it's gonna trigger, blind you, kind of a pain in the ass. However, if they did a more expensive one and triggered on UV, it would never do that. Huh, that gives me an idea. We got 21% visible light, and this, this instrument is made for sunglasses, so grain of salt. There we go, when it's triggered, got about 1% visible light if we can get it to keep oh zero percent visible light yeah so compared to sunglasses yeah you get it's very opaque very dark what we got going on now is we're going to use the vulcan welder i know we're breaking the rules to uh be a power supply for electromagnetic radiation and uh i'll withhold judgment on this thing but i will say it's a lot less shitty than i expected i expected it to be just bloody fucking atrocious and uh it ain't that bad okay shields down and prepare to burn your eyeballs oh fuck that's bright Woo. and not working son of a fucking diddly well what are you gonna do yeah, failure to chooch on uh, the purchasing side of the instrumentation. Or maybe, just maybe, it's working perfectly. Huh? Could that be? Could it be that it's actually working? Okay, let's get... <laughs> let, let's see here. Maybe I'm not so dumb after all. <laughs> I know, it's a long shot. Hard act. Oh yeah, brighter as freak. All over the fucking place. Yeah, off the scale, yeah. So, it's working. It works. No surprise. Same with the Shade 10 glass. 100% UV rejection. Now, the interesting thing is, though, here's just a very thin sheet of polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is very impact resistant. If you sit, uh, see a Z... Uh, Z91, I believe it is. Z91. Where is it? Where is it? Somewhere around that. I think it's an ANSI Z91 designation on your safety glasses. Impact resistant and they're plastic. It's going to be polycarbonate. So let's have a look at, at this. Right off the hop here. Just absolutely clear. And we're getting almost 85% UV rejection. IR a little bit, a little bit opaque to IR, not much, and then VL transmission. So that tells me that when I am running the cutting torch, what I normally do is wear uh, safety glasses because I don't find it that bright. And, um, you know, it's just a torch, but that is a mistake, a terrible, terrible mistake because... What you're more worried about is the infrared. And these are not rejecting any, very little infrared. However, rejecting 100% of the IR. So if you're in a welding shop and uh, you're walking past some welders and you get arc flashed and you got your safety glasses on, no big fucking deal. These are protecting you from UV even though they're absolutely clear. Now some cutting glasses. Yeah, look at the difference. 100% UV 
100% IR and very little light getting through there. Just with the cutting glasses. Now the finest welding helmet in all of Mao's Dollarama Poundland. Don't fucking laugh. Don't laugh. I seen it. I lived it. The finest Chineseium. People are cheap, buddy. People, life is not the same over there. Okay. OSHA? <laughs> oh, shit. So this is rejecting. Well, let's get these. Come on. Come on. Quit fucking around. No, seriously. I've seen it. I lived it. Yeah, so that's 13% uh, through put on the visible. Only 50% IR reduction. So, yeah, even sunglasses are helping you a little bit if you're running the cutting torch compared to clear safety maglarses. However, these are not impact resistant and uh, you likely get written up if your <laughs> future's bright. You gotta wear shades, admittedly, but you probably get yourself written up. A very pertinent question that A-Bomb had. Hey, man, I'll I, I love... I like you, man. <laughs> I can't say the other word. That's disingenuous. I, you know, come on, come on. People bandy that word around far, far too much. I like you. I'm going to answer this question. So he was wondering how long this thing took to chooch from the strike of the arc till it actually darkened up. Here's the thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because this is essentially IR and UV opaque. And think about that. It has to be. Because if it wasn't opaque, if it was just allowing a little bit to pass, then depending on your focal distance, if you were up here and it was set up for a regular focal distance to, to pass, you know, 90 or to not pass, to only pass like 0.111111% of the radiation, then when you pull the old noob routine and you got your nose right in there, what for sniffing the fumes, you're getting cancer, then you get irradiated because... Uh, square root and so forth you just there's way more energy there so this has to this has to uh, be opaque to IR and UV in my mind anyway does that make sense however we still want to see how quickly the the little brain box in here actually switches over to get the shade on in order to do that we get the high-speed camera in case you missed it, walking through the haloed gates of the Empire of Dirt, uh, you know, people get overawed. <laughs> this is not an ANSI accredited laboratory, okay? We're a couple, we're, we're bumble fucking around in the shop, and the results indicate that. But they are interesting. Learn some stuff here. One, you do not get flashed with IR, infrared, or UV through these, even if they don't fire, even if they don't darken. All you're getting is the bright, visible light that leaves spots. So that it's probably not that great, but it's nothing like roasting your eyeballs with IR or uh, burning them out with, with UV. So that's good. These things, super, super safe. Also, another thing I learned, I've been using these as cutting glasses. No, that's a stupid fucking idea. That's stupid, stupid, stupid of me. I should have known better. Use the proper cutting glasses because these do not cut as much of the uh, IR that I thought they would. I thought they'd cut 100%. I thought polycarbonate cut 100% of the uh, infrared. It doesn't. It doesn't. And infrared is what gives you cataracts. Cooks your eyes from the inside out. What else? Oh, yeah. These things, opaque to... Or are they opaque? Anyway, these offer these offer some protection. Yeah, even if you flash yourself and you don't have your shield down, you're still not getting the full brunt of all that radiation just through that little chintzy thin layer of plastic. What else did we learn? What else did we learn? I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. If you have any questions about this, you got any concerns, you want me to test something else, hey man. I bought the instruments. Um, I ain't going anywhere. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in the vice. Yeah, and uh, go and check out Avon. Well, if you if you're into machining, you already know about Avon. If you don't, if you're not into machining, what the fuck is wrong with you? you